Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, and today a package arrived. So this right here is an adapter. Uh, it's supposed to be used in a 2014 to, well, 2013 to 2015, 13 inch or 11 inch MacBook Air. And what it basically does is allow you to use NVMe SSDs like the regular ones you find at like Canada computers in your MacBook Air, which will be useful because I have a 2014 13 inch MacBook Air and a Western Digital 256 gig NVMe SSD and a mini toolkit that I bought from the can local Canada computers for $8. And combining all that, we're gonna upgrade my storage in my 2014 MacBook Air from 128 gigs to 256 gigs. You might ask why I, why I don't go higher. Uh, I have this 500 gig Samsung 970 Evo Plus SSD, but those don't work too well with macOS, so I'm probably just gonna use this as a time machine backup, or I just take the screws off my MacBook Air because I have a Windows install with GTA 5 on this. So I can just use that to play GTA 5 on a MacBook Air, even though it probably wouldn't run very well. Also, I use the Gateway computer to play GTA 5. But anyways, let's get into it. And with that, I think I'm ready to take on this project. Yeah. There we go. But before we do that, I already took a screw up because I'm an idiot, but we should turn off the MacBook Air. That'd probably be a good idea. Shut down. Come on. Go. Okay. There we go. Alright, now that all the screws are here, we want to put those to the side so we don't lose the screws. Because I don't want to lose any screws on this machine. We're going to put this to the side. And now we're going to take this little tab right here uh, and unplug the battery. Crap. Now you want to put this up a little bit. It'll be a bit finicky to get back in afterwards, but we just don't want it connecting while we're working on the machine. Okay, and here is the SSD that we will want to take out. Now, we'll want to switch out our Penlobe P5 bit, which is 1.2 in this toolkit, to a T5 bit. There we go. And we will want to take out this little screw on the SSD, which is a Torx T5 bit, I think. Yep, it works. I wanna put that to the side for now. And we're going to use this SSD adapter and put an SSD in here. Now, I'm gonna try the 970 Evo first because I want to try booting into Windows on this and playing GTA 5 because I have never actually played GTA 5 on this exact machine before so I'm gonna try doing that uh, we're gonna take out this Samsung this Samsung Apple OEM SSD here we're gonna pick up our screwdriver off the floor we're gonna put the SSD in the machine and we are going to figure out that this is too big it, the adapter is too big Now, I did hear one review specifying this exact problem. Oh, wait, never mind. Never mind. It worked, it worked, it worked, it worked. So, now that that screw hole's free, we're gonna put back in that screw we took out earlier. Now, I'm not gonna be keeping this in the machine, obviously. I just wanna put it in for funsies right now. You know what? I think it's held in good enough, so I'm probably just gonna leave it like that. 
Okay, so we're gonna power it up and press option. Oh wait, I forgot to plug in the battery, I'm flipping it. Okay, now, press the power, hold down option. Might wanna also plug it in, because this SSD is gonna take quite a bit of power. Okay, come on. Come on. Let's hold down option right now, real quick. Oh shit. So we're in here. I'm gonna press EFI boot. And we're gonna press Windows. And here is now booting into Windows 11. Hey, at least we verified that the adapter works, although window is, Windows is uh, pretty unstable. Go figure. Yeah, it just crashed again, blue screened again. So what I'm going to do is just tab, shut down. Nope, not restart. We're just gonna hold down the power button and just flip it over again and put in the SSD I actually want to use in this machine. Okay, so what I've done here is I basically screwed in the adapter before the SSD. Now the SSD seems pretty stable. Yeah, I'll just tape it in and it'll be fine. Uh, it's not that much thicker, thicker than the battery, so I'm hoping the back panel just goes on. And honestly, I recommend you guys get a better adapter than what I have here. Like one of those little small ones that will actually fit quite nicely in the MacBook with the SSD attached. So, yeah. But we're just gonna re-screw everything back up and we'll uh, get back to you guys. Okay, so I've screwed in all the back. I didn't even take the SSD in, so I'm just gonna shake it up a bit. See if that SSD is stable in there. Uh, it's a bit, it presents a bit of a bulge but it's still stable. The certified Nick porno stability test. Let me just turn it on, because I don't think I unplugged the battery, which was, might have been a stupid decision. But, I'm gonna hold down option and see if it's being detected. I'm gonna hold down option to see if it's being detected. Okay, so that presents me with a bit of an issue. I'll get back to you when I figure that out. I opened the machine up just to remember that I was using this NVMe drive as a backup to this drive. Like, all, th all this has is all on here. Also all on here, I was trying to follow the 321 rule back then, which I probably will end up doing again, but yeah, I figured out what the issue is. So there was no issue with the drive or how I installed it. It was just that I was an idiot and thought that there was something wrong with the drive when it didn't even have an operating system on it. All right, I'm gonna go put on this backlight. I'll be right back. All right, back to the 2010 21.5 inch iMac because that's one of the only things that I have up right now. Wait, hang on. Why isn't the USB drive showing up? Hang on. And there we go. So all we need to do, because it already has macOS Sonoma on it, hence the name. Uh, we, only, we only need to go into OCLP right here. Sorry, it's handheld filming, so it's a bit shaky. So we're gonna go to settings. We're gonna go to uh, MacBook 6 comma 2, I believe. No, no, hang on. Okay, so I've got it to MacBook Air 6, 2, return, build and install open core, uh, install to disk, fetching information on local disks. And we're gonna go to data traveler, EFI, and then we're gonna type in my password on camera. 
and it's installing. So you can see the EFI partition on the desktop there. And OpenCore has installed the disk. So now we should be able to take the USB stick out of the iMac and place it into the MacBook. Okay, so you gotta plug the MacBook in because of course I am it's an installer. So we're going to want to plug in and then that's a fun too. That's Mac OS. Okay, it's cleaning up now. So what we're gonna want to do is shut it down and unplug our drive with the Mac OS Sonoma installer and open core onto it. Okay, we'll need to press down option. And we're booted to OpenCore. And now it's booting the Mac OS Sonoma installer automatically because that is the only uh, type of installation media we have in the system other than internet recovery, which I'm not planning on using internet recovery. This is probably going to install some really outdated old version of macOS unless the firmware has been updated so it installs a newer one, but I'd rather not take the risk, but yeah, I'm going to install it from a USB drive. Okay, and now we're booted into the macOS Sonoma installer, uh, continue into disk utility, and there is our new disk. So it is being detected in the system as a 256 gig Western Digital SN530 media. So we're going to format that to Sonoma SSD, put it to APFS and GUID partition map. Uh, use the same settings for your Mac as well. If you're following along with this as a tutorial, which you might be. Uh, and now let's close that install Mac OS Sonoma, which I'll probably get back to you when it's done. Uh, Mac OS Sonoma, continue, continue. It's supposed to pinwheel, it won't crash, don't worry. You're, you're, you're gonna be fine. Okay, so um, I'm gonna select Western Digital to install it on the Sonoma SSD we just created, and we're going to install it, and I'm gonna come back to when I install it, but the reason I'm not using the Samsung SSD in this is because even in the minutes it was booted into Windows and then crashed, it got really hot, so I don't trust this machine, this SSD, plus it would have probably made the battery life very crappy. Okay, so now, the MacBook is now booted up and is running with the new SSD. So we can throw that aside, select Canada as our region, because I live in Canada. Uh, I am not disabled, although maybe, no I'm not. Uh, type in my network password. Continue with the data and privacy. Apple is very private, apparently. Uh, for Mac Time Machine backup or startup disk, continue. I'm gonna plug in the Time Machine drive. Uh, click Time Machine Backup, continue, Up. continue, hang on, okay we have a list of backups here, uh, we're going to click this one and then continue with it because that's the only one on the drive, that was the Time Machine Backup from the previous drive. So that should be fine, and it'll prepare source, 
uh, calculating all of these, which might take a while, so I'm going to let it do that off camera, but uh, yeah, I'm going to come back when this is done. Okay, so it's done finding all the files. I like doing this before I uh, restore it because it's going to be taking me time to do it, and then I want to see how much is on the drive. So that's how much is on my drive. Continue, and I'm going to set a password for it, and then continue. And in about five hours, because that drive is super slow, we will have everything that was on the original drive right onto my MacBook. So that should be fine, good to go. And with that, my Mac is restored. So from here, It looks like graphics drivers were installed automatically. And all we need to do is wait for, the, for it to log in. And then we should have a perfectly functional MacBook Air with 256 gigabytes of storage. Also, I think this part might have been needed for something. And now from here, I can just sign in with my Apple ID off camera. I'll continue without analytics because I don't do that. Continue with screen time, turn on file vault, dark mode. Open core has support for file vault, so there's no need to worry about that. And in no time, and instead of having about 20 gigabytes free with a 128 gigabyte drive, I now have 161 gigabytes free with a new drive. Okay, so the repair is completed and concluded with. I didn't lose any screws, although I did have to get rid of this one so I could put like the bracket in and all, but it's working fine. Uh, but there's one thing I want to test and it, that is sleep because some people have said with these adapters and stuff and non-OWC drives and stuff that when they upgraded the drive in their MacBook, that sleep was broken. So I'm just gonna put it to sleep and I'm gonna go, uh, since it's April 8th, I'm going to, oh, it doesn't say on my watch, but it's April 8th and I might, might as well watch the eclipse because I have nothing else to do today. Uh, and I'm going to come back to see if that has crashed. Okay, so I've had the SSD in for a few days in the machine and it's been working out pretty good. Sleep still works. I haven't had any issues with the SSD other than this because I put the bracket in, which was a little too thick for the MacBook. I'm probably going to take that out and resort to using green tape for it, but here's the speeds of the SSD I put in. Not the best speeds ever. I am probably might, I maybe put the uh, Samsung SSD in here, like in the, f in the future, if I ever need more storage and that'll give me faster speeds. Honestly, I really don't care about the speeds as long as it boots up fast enough for me, that's fine. But yeah, these are the speeds, if anybody is wondering the technical details, 274.1 megabits per second write and 1147.6 megabits per second read. Anyway, I hope you guys liked the video. I structured it as a tutorial as much as I could because I wanted it to kind of be used as a tutorial if you ever want to upgrade your own MacBook Air. And this tutorial can also be used on uh, MacBook Pros as well. That's basically the same instructions still apply. It might be in a different place, uh, but, and you might want to find a different adapter as well. If those are different, I don't think the 2013 to 2015 MacBook Airs and Pros use different adapters for their SSDs, but they might, you might want to do your own research. I'm just saying, but anyways, thank you guys for watching. Huge thanks to my Patreon names are on the screen uh, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.